Hey everyone, thank you so much for your really kind and very, very positive feedback about the uh, choosing colors video. It did take a lot of work to make, but I think uh, it's really, I learned a lot actually creating that video and uh, it seems like a lot of you have also, but this is what is really great about YouTube and that immediate feedback. Uh, I got a lot of questions about the color wheel, how to place colors in the color wheel. So I wanted to show you how I created my color wheel and then how I put the colors in it. Let's start with making it. I used uh, as a model this, this um, color wheel that I bought, I don't know, I think from Amazon was a few euros. This is the smaller one. Uh, I know there's a bigger version. I find that this one is uh, enough for me. And basically it has a lot of functions that I don't, um, well, I sometimes use. You can see there's in the back, uh, it just has different kind of tones. So it, it works like this. This is the most saturated color and then this shows you what happens if you add white. This shows you how it looks if you add gray and this one is, what are you? Oh, and this one is uh, what happens when you add black. So obviously that's not always relevant for um, watercolors. I mean, even in acrylics or oils, you have a lot of ways to mix uh, different tones, but it's kind of a good reference and I do like this side of the wheel uh, because a lot of the times the colors that I'm not so sure about, like where they belong in the color wheel, this side is very helpful. So something like, I don't know, the more earthy tones, sometimes I'm not sure if they're more yellow or more um, yellow orangey. Once it starts to get into the very muted area, it can be hard. Now, I don't need it to match exactly. This is just a very, um, you know, kind of guesstimating where the colors that you use and you love fall on the color wheel. And then this side you can see has like, for example, the yellow. So you have what happens when you add red, it shows you. And then what happens when you add yellow, obviously nothing here. What happens when you add blue? what happens when you add black, and what happens when you add, uh, sorry, this is white and then black. And then you also have some, uh, like the value scale. So lots of great information. What I don't like about this wheel is that it's actually not really correct. <laughs> um, color theory, I mean, I guess there are also different versions to that, but as far as I know, if you have yellow, magenta, which doesn't exist on this wheel, and cyan, which also doesn't exist on this wheel, I guess it would be somewhere between the blue, green, and blue. You can make any colors, and the reason that I know that is because that's what printers have, actually. So, you know, okay. Anyway, it's the point is not to master color theory here. The point is to explore your color schemes, color stories. So I'll show you, first of all, this is divided to 12, um, you know, pie <laughs> pieces. So that's what we're going to do. I'm using this Sepia 10% Carandash Museum Aquarelle pencil, which is water soluble, but it's very, very light. And I just like the look of the color wheel. I think black is too intense. Uh, what you definitely don't want to do is use a super intense color that is water soluble uh, because then it will contaminate your colors. But this works fine. I personally like the hand drawn look. That's what I like and I like to kind of mark with these dots where the quarters are going to be. And then I just go through the middle kind of, <laughs> this is heavier on the bottom. And now to divide it to, um, you know, six slices on each side, I try to kind of guesstimate a third. So in every quarter, a third, and then I'll do here the same, and then I'll 
draw a line. It really, really doesn't need to be accurate. I mean, I don't mind it, but if you do, you can, you know, take a ruler and measure stuff. If that's you, go for it. I really like it actually to look kind of wonky and hand-drawn. Okay, so now the next step, this is kind of a color wheel. You see this a lot, and I think 12 is a good place. Um, I, I think it's a good number. I think too little, you kind of get into trouble when you start getting into like the secondary and tertiary colors. And then too much is just, it's, it's too much, <laughs> more than 12. Now, what I like to do next is actually divide, as you can see here, to kind of four tiers. And the take under consideration that the outer rim will have more space so you can make it a bit narrower. And then if you want to explore nicely your very neutral colors, which will be in the center, uh, leave a little bit more space for it. So don't make it like this, but uh, make it the biggest pie slice, I don't know. So this is what I'm going to use for the most saturated colors. Uh, if you don't know if your color is saturated or not, uh, first of all, you know, it's not such a big deal, but the rule of thumb is that the colors that are on this outer edge are either primary colors or colors that are mixed only from two primaries. So only, you know, yellow, and then what do they do here? They have uh, yellow orange, orange, red orange, red, red violet, violet, blue violet, blue, blue green, green, and uh, yellow green. So it's all colors that are either primary colors or what they consider primary colors or mixed from two primaries. Once you start getting into three primary colors, you start going in. So the second um, tier is my semi-muted colors and those are usually my favorites. So those would be colors that you can see, you know, this is cobalt violet here, and then this is slightly muted. How you mute it, it really depends on which colors you uh, chose for your color stories. I don't, um, you know, use like gray to mute everything and then put that in the color wheel, no. I want to use this color wheel to explore my chosen uh, color story. So the second tier will be semi-muted, then the third tier will be muted. So just going into almost neutral, but the thing is the, the difference between muted and neutral, as I understand it, is that, you know, muted, you can still see kind of that base color that what once was here, so it'll be like a very muted a pink or a very muted purple, you will be able to say, you know, which color it was, a very muted orange. But once you go into the neutral, you know, you go into brown, gray, black, and you can't really tell what it was. I hope that makes sense. And then the middle one will be those neutral shades. So you can see it's not accurate and it's not an accurate science, especially not how I do this. And that's the point of my color wheels and I think the reason that I got a lot of questions. I'm not really trying to copy the reference color wheel. I'm trying to match as best I can the colors I love and I use to paint and put them on my color wheel and that gives me an idea of the temperature of my color story, you know, if it's warmer, if it's cooler, it gives me an idea of the values and then the different muted colors, neutrals and like semi-muted colors that I can get. That's why I use the color uh, wheel. Now with time and the more you experiment, you know, some colors might be problematic for you. And, um, you know, like, I don't know, for example, something like Nicolazo yellow. Is it yellow or is it more kind of a yellow orange? or is it more of an earthy tone? 
I don't think it matters that much. Um, for me, I'll, that is a color that I would put here. It is saturated and it might be a little bit earthier than other yellows, but currently I don't even have in my palette uh, something like, I don't know, like a cadmium yellow or Hansa yellow that might be a bit more intense and saturated than this. So I'm okay with putting this at the top. Now I'll give you another example for a color that might be problematic to place. So this is the, let's zoom in a little bit. This is the Lucas Naples Yellow Red. Now you can see, first of all, it's a little bit more opaque. The nickel azo yellow is transparent. And it is, I would say, kind. It's, it's pretty orange, but it's not a super saturated orange. And we can see that, let's say, for example, I will use for this uh, color story today, Carmine which is a Van Gogh color that I've recently discovered and really love. Jackson's doesn't um, carry the Van Gogh um, in open stock, so I'll have to go to my local art store when it opens and, um, and buy a tube of that. I really like that color. So this is also a very saturated color. Now, where does it fall between red and red-violet according to this color wheel? I would say it's probably closer to the red, so I'm okay with putting it, you know, if this is the yellow, this is the red-violet, then this is the red here, and I can put it here. And because these two colors that I have placed on my color wheel are very saturated, I'm going to do the mixes on the outer rim because this, you can see, this is, uh, I would say it's it's a good neutral. It probably leans a little bit cool. It probably has a little bit of blue in it, but very, very little. So for me, I'm, I'm okay with uh, using these two colors as saturated primaries. Now, what I like to do now is to mix them and see which uh, colors I get here. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll show you my palette. So you can see this is a great exercise because it really kind of teaches you how to mix um, colors in different ratios and get to uh, a different a different color uh, that is not too different, but still different enough to be included in uh, a separate thing. Now, you might mix a color and you'll think, oh, that looks different, and you'll put it on the color wheel and you'll see that these two are really, really similar. Then go back and uh, you can either remove it or add a very light glaze of the carmine to adjust it. Now, I'm gonna start with the yellow because yellow is less intense. And I'm gonna grab some of the carmine and just bring it into the yellow. I'll you know, wash my brush. So you can see, I think this is different enough that this could be like a, a yellow orange. It might be too similar, but that's okay. You see, this is a bit warm, so maybe it would it should have been here. But next time you'll make a color wheel, then you'll know. Now let's mix an orange. I think this is this is a good uh, mid midway kind of mix between the two of them. And you can add another glaze. Sometimes, you know, when you mix colors, they get kind of watered down. And then the next one is going to be just a slightly warmer carmine. Okay, so now you can see that these are my most uh, saturated mixes. Um, they're not as saturated. I'll give you an example. If I take something like, this is, I don't know, I think like 
um, some red from Daniel Smith. So you can see how red it is compared to this one. This now looks a lot more blue than this. If I mix this with quinacridone gold, which is a very orangey yellow, then I get a really bright orange, brighter than this, than this one. But I don't care. Um, for my purposes, I want a representation of the colors that I picked. So let's get back to our uh, Lucas Naples yellow red. So where does this land? As we said, it's a little bit muted. You can see it's not as bright as these. So I would say it's either kind of a muted um, orange yellow or a muted orange. I'm going to put it here for now, although it does look more yellow to me than this. So, okay. So I can adjust. I can just lift it and then I'll put it here. And this doesn't have to be accurate. The Really, the point here is for you to learn and it will start to get even more helpful when we get into the complementary colors that I almost always use complementary colors. So, here we have the Naples Yellow Red. Let's see what happens when we mix that with the Carmine. So for me, um, if you've seen my artwork, let's see. So the Carmine is really intense. I can test also colors before I put them in. This is not a big enough difference for me. Okay, so I added some carmine and you can see that I get a really interesting orange color that is more opaque than this version that I mixed. So the same color I mixed now with the Naples Yellow Red and then on the outer rim with the Nickel Azo Yellow. And then if we add even more carmine, then we get this muted version. So a really pretty, um, I don't know, kind of a watermelony, pinky, orangey color. Really pretty. I really love the combos of uh, using this as my yellow. So there is no right or wrong here. You have to see what you like. So let's, for the purposes of this color wheel, let's now include um, Moon Glow. So let's take a look at Moon Glow. Moon Glow, let's do a little swatch here. This is definitely, definitely muted to me. I wouldn't, I can use it as a neutral, in my palette, but if I just characterize the color on its own, I would say it's a muted uh, purple, like a muted violet purple. Whereas something like this, this is Bloodstone, is for me um, much harder to characterize. I would say it's like a black and maybe it has, uh, like maybe it's a more a cooler black or something like this, but it's still a black. So that would be kind of the difference. Let's look at another example. This is neutral tint. Again, I can't say if this is, you know, blue, purple, or anything like that. Let's look at dusk pink. This is also muted, but I would claim <laughs> that this can be um, a very muted pink. So Okay, so where do I put Moon Glow? Let's take a look at my color wheel. I would say, you know, I can look here at this one and let's look at the purple area. Let's say I'm kind of torn between the blue violet, the violet, and then the red violet. So I definitely think this is more blue. So I'm left with these two areas. And between the violet and blue violet, 
I would say on the color wheel, I think it resembles more the violet. So that's where I'm going to put it on my color wheel here. And it's going to be in the third tier because it's, to me, it's a semi, uh, to me, it's a muted color. And let's see now if we can make it into a neutral with the colors that we already have. So I'm going to put on my palette a little bit, and this will also teach you where, if you're not sure, it'll teach you where your color belongs on the tiers and in the color wheel, depending how it works with other colors when you mix it. So let's add a touch of my yellow that is, according to my wheel, it's a complementary color. I'm not sure that it is. Let's add a little bit and see what we get. Okay, this I would say is, I could call it a very muted green. So let's add a little bit more. And this to me starts to get, this is very gray. Can even add a little bit. So hopefully you can see the difference between the moon glow in its pure form and then mixed with a touch of yellow, which is a complementary color that neutralizes it. Now I put, put well, I could probably get it to be a little bit cooler, but you can see that these are very different colors and when you put them next to each other, you can absolutely see that this is more purple and you will say, okay, this is kind of a violet color. Now, the point of this color wheel is to really explore the different colors that you can create with the colors that you choose. And the way I like to use it is I start with, you know, one, two or three colors and I try to fill as much of the spaces that I can with them. And then I go and I look if I have any empty spaces that I would like to fill, if there are more colors that I would like to add. Um, and doing it like this really shows me the options as opposed to, it just works for me better, as opposed to if I did here just like a bunch of different swatches or mixes, this is really gives me a good eye of all the things I can achieve also with all three colors or maybe four colors or maybe five colors. You can continue to play and adjust and see if you can fill more spaces in your color wheel. So that's what I'm going to do now with just the four colors that I picked and we'll see um, what I can do.
Okay, so I'm done with my color wheel and I think you can see now that I can't say it turned out as accurately as I name my tears here. Um, these colors, I wouldn't call them neutral. I would definitely call them muted because I can see this is kind of a pink, this is an orange, um, this is a, a mauve color, and this is like a Bordeaux color. So the reason is that all of my colors are kind of leaning very um, pinky, orangey, with just a touch of blue in my moon glow. So it is harder to get a, a big variety of neutral colors because most of my mixes will be in that uh, orangey, pinky area. And that's okay because maybe that's what I want. And this allowed me to understand that. Now, if I wanted more variety in my neutrals, I still think, you know, I can get really pretty darks here. But if I wanted more variety, then I should probably add something that falls somewhere here. It doesn't have to be like a super saturated, um, you know, like ultramarine blue that would fall probably here or um, whatever. It can also be something like uh, lunar blue, which is a lot bluer than, than moon glow. And that will give me more neutrals. Or it can be something like a green. So something like cascade green would also give me a lot more neutrals because it's here. So the more you areas you cover on your wheel, the more options you have, the more variety you have. It doesn't have to be what you want. You can have a very, you can make a beautiful painting that has a limited color palette. Um, analogous color palette is something, you know, very known and used by many artists. Personally, I'm not a huge fan. I do like that contrast. I like, I like, semi-muted colors and neutral colors. And so you always need that contra in your uh, color wheel. But once you understand that, it will be a lot easier for you to get to where you wanna be and also use the colors that you love. So you don't have to match this exactly, but you, you can start with that and then try and figure out where things fall on your wheel. So, you know, maybe you placed something and there's not enough difference in the colors between. So next time you can just place it here. So for example, if I didn't have enough variety of oranges and um, reds, I could just start with carmine here and see how that works. But I think this, um, this area is pretty good. And then here, I don't have a lot of muted options because I don't have something that is different enough to neutralize them. There's only a little bit of blue in the moon glow. Other than that, maybe, maybe a very, very small amount of blue in the carmine, but very, very little. It's, it's a good primary color, I would say. So it's very hard for me to, you know, blue is the complementary color of orange. It's very hard for me to get neutrals when I don't have anything on this side. I hope that helps clear things up. Uh, maybe now you can go back and look again at my choosing colors video and see how um, I created the color wheels there.